Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So we'll be doing forests and wildlife resources. This is the second chapter of geography and we'll get started with the chapter, right? So what do you mean or like we all, uh, majority of you guys are from India who are studying this chapter. So India, if you see, look around yourself, you see a lot of flora and fauna, flora and fauna, plants and animals, right? We have that big diversity in our country and we're lucky enough to have it. But when uh, invaders came uh, and we said we cut down the woods, we did deforestation, we never thought of planting anything again, but rather using it. We thought we just knew how to exploit things. We didn't know how to recover it or how to keep the thing on going we, so that the future generation get it. We didn't care about the, those things and we just kept exploiting stuff, right? So all these things about the forest, about the animals, plants, just how, this is what we would be discussing in this chapter, okay? So we're starting with biodiversity. Biodiversity, what is it? Bio, biology, diversity, diversity, right? Like different uh, diverse things, different things like different animals, different plants. The plants have different diversity in them, different differences in them. So biodiversity or biological diversity is immensely rich in wildlife and cultivated species. Diverse in form and function, but closely integrated in a system through multiple network of interdependencies. Okay, now uh, how are they related? Our sun, okay, the sun, uh, it gives the energy for plants to do its photosynthesis, prepare the food. Plants is the food for some small animals. Those animals are food for uh, large animals, to humans. Plants, is, um, plants and animals is food to humans, right? So this, if you see, they're all interdependent. If one of them is stopped, the all, all of the chains is going to be stopped. All of them are going to be adversely affected. Without plants, do you think we'll get oxygen? No. That we don't consider these things and yet we keep exploiting it. So these biodiversities, they have some differences in them, in their function, but they are related, they are interdependent to each other. Fine. So now we are moving on to the next one, which is conservation of forests and wildlife in India. Conservation preserves the ecological diversity in our life support system, water, air and soil. It also preserves the genetic uh, diversity of plants and animals for better growth of species and breeding. So what is the base for all? Water, air and soil. So this is the base of all and sunlight is also included. For all the living organisms, these three are the main criteria which has to be followed. In 1960s and 1970s, conservationists um, demanded a national wildlife protection program. So people who are uh, looking forward for the conservation of environment or, or who are uh, caring for the environment, who thinks it is not right to uh, exploit the forest and wildlife things, right? So people like that came forward and then they built up this national wildlife protection program. Other than that, we have many schemes. There are many schemes wherein we are protecting different types of animal, endangered, extinct animals, many more. Okay, so this is the thing. Let's see what are those programs. Indian Wildlife Protection Act was implemented in 1972. Now, I want you guys to remember this with various provisions for protecting habitats. Okay. So Indian National uh, Indian Wildlife Protection Act was implemented in 1972. So long back ago, it's a, we started with this conservation. So you can get to the point on how much uh, destruction has been caused by now, right? So the trust of the program, the main core or the main idea of the program was towards protecting the remaining population of certain endangered species by banning hunting, giving legal protection to their habitats and restricting trade in wildlife. So the main agenda of this program, which is the Protection Act of 1972, was to protect the remaining populations. Okay, what is left behind? They left it. We cannot reform it. But the one which is left, the one which can be formed, which can be, again, which can be protected, the ones which are on the verge of extinction or endangered species, they are uh, protected. They have been protected by banning hunting, you have to remember these, banning hunting, legal protection to the habitats and restricting trade in wildlife. So these are the three points, banning hunting, giving legal protection to the habitats and restricting trade in wildlife. So these are the three points. Endangered animals have been given full or partial legal protections against hunting and trade throughout the India. 
see they're already endangered they're on the verge of extinction so if we still go on hunting them we won't have such a species left behind on the earth so and hence obviously obvious reason is that we will stop the hunting process of those animals okay uh protect tiger this is the thing which is given in a box up there you just have to read through it nothing much to remember from this protect tiger tiger is one of the key wildlife species in the faunal web in 1973, the authorities realized that the tiger population had dwindled from 1,827 from an estimation of estimated of 55,000 at the turn of a century. See, uh, there was this phase wherein people or the pe the kings and stuff they used to get enjoyment by hunting tigers down. They used to be that it used to be a sort of uh, bravery thing. Killing a tiger is sort of bravery thing. You showcase your bravery by killing a tiger. So this was all uh, done by the people back in India. And because of this, there was a drastic down case, like from 55,000, it went to 1,000. Right? The major threats to tiger population are numerous, such as poaching for trade. Apart from those old things, we take the skin, the leather and stuff. So poaching for the trade, Stringing habitat, depletion of prey-based species, growing human population. We are invading to the forest now. The trade of tiger skins and the use of their bonds in traditional medicines, especially in the Asian countries, left the tiger population on the verge of extinction. Since India and Nepal provide habitat to about two-thirds of the surviving tiger population of the world, these two nations became prime targets for poaching and illegal trading. Project Tiger, one of the well-publicized wildlife campaigns in the world, was launched in 1973. So when was Project Tiger launched? 1973, just after the Indian Wildlife Act was being proclaimed. Tiger conservation has been viewed not only as an effort to save an endangered species, but with, uh, with equal importance as a means of preserving biotypes of sizable magnitude. Corbett National Park uh, in Uttarakhand, Sundarbans National Park in West Bengal, Bandhavgarh National Park in Madhya Pradesh, Sareksha Wildlife Sanctuary in Rajasthan, Manas Tiger Reservoir in um, Reserve in Assam, and Peria Tiger Reserve in Kerala, some of the tiger reserves of India. So this is just a brief on the places wherever we have this tiger thing, tiger project. Okay, so in among this all, just know this, this uh, places like where is where is uh, Corbett National Park situated? It is in uh, Uttarakhand, right? So these questions can come in MCQ format. One or two questions can come. Okay, fine. So this is just not so important, but do give it a very importance to the name of the places and where is it situated. In the notification in the Wildlife Act of 1980 and 1986. Several hundred butterflies, moths, and moths beetles, and one dragonfly have been added to the list of protected species. In 1991, for the first time, plants were also added to the list, starting with six species. So later on, uh, apart from the animals, insects and plants were also added. Uh, at the first point, it was just animals, and then we started uh, exploiting insects, and then after that, plants. Okay. So this was just a brief on it or uh, how uh, how the conservation can be done and what are the methods how the Indian Wildlife Act helped many animals and insects plants recover. So next topic is types and distribution of forest and wildlife resources. So in this we have three reserved forest, protected forest, unclassed forest questions can come for three marks. Right. So reserved forest more than half of the total forest lands have been declared reserved forest. The forest is called the reserved forest, wherein the reserved forests are regarded as the most valuable as far as the conservation of forests and wildlife resources are concerned. Okay, uh, the reserved forests are such wherein much exploitation has not yet reached, so they are trying to protect it more. Okay, they are reserved; no human activity can be to, uh, take place there. Next one is protected forest. Almost one third of the total forest area is protected forest, as declared by the forest department. This forest land are protected from any further depletion. So protected forests are those which have been depleted to an extent, but then now onwards it stopped. The depletion is stopped. You cannot deplete it more. Reserve was the one which there was no depletion or the depletion thing did not reach it yet. Protected are one which and already underwent uh, the depletion criteria, but then now it has been protected so that there's no further depletion so that the forest can be more available. 
Unclassed forests, these are other forests and based plants belonging to government and private individuals and communities wherein anything can take place. That is, that the depletion still take place. Like for the woods and stuff, we can still cut down the uh, trees. Okay, so these are the unclassed forests. Reserved, protected, unclassed forests. Okay, so these are the three types. You have to remember what is it and is, uh, is it depletable or is it usable, everything. Reserved and protected forests are also referred to as permanent forests. Okay, no more human activity can be done there. Madhya Pradesh has the largest area under permanent forests, constituting 75% of its total forest area. Jammu and Kashmir, Andhra Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, and Maharashtra have large percentages of reserved forests of its total forest area, whereas Bihar, Haryana, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Odisha, and Rajasthan have a bulk of it. Uh, in the protected forest. All northeastern states and uh, parts of Gujarat have a high percentage of those forests as unclassed forests managed by local communities. This unclassed forest can also be wastelands or deserty lands, wherein you cannot cultivate anything, there's no plants or trees, it's just solid land with some soil, right? These are called unclassed um, forests. Okay, so you don't have to remember all of them, just remember this, Madhya Pradesh has the largest permanent forest which is permanent forest is reserved as well as protected. Both of them are named as or are as called as permanent forest. So Madhya Pradesh is one of them. Then all of these states, um, many of the states are coming under reserved forest. Learn any two states, okay, like Jammu and Andhra, it comes under reserved forest, whereas Bihar and Haryana comes under protected forest. And northeastern states and parts of Gujarat come under unclassed forest. So any uh, learn any two example of each and whether Pradesh is important. Okay, so remember uh, reserved and for protected forests are referred to as permanent forests. Hopefully this is clear to you guys, yeah. Community and conservation, this chapter is small, okay, so less number of questions will come from it and it is scorable chapter as well, like three mark, two mark, it will come. Once we're done with the chapters, we'll do the sample question paper, which is released so that we get a proper clear idea of the chapters or the marking of the chapters. So community and conservation. Sarekshatai Reservoir and uh, Reserve in Rajasthan, villages have fought against mining by citing the Wildlife Protection Act. So these are uh, some places where the people itself took forward some interest. Or these are some occasions, like for example, Chivka Movement. That was a movement by the people itself to protect the trees. They went and hugged the trees so that the um, People who cut down the trees that won't be able to do it. In such a way, the Sarekshya Thai Reserve in uh, Rajasthan, villages have fought against mining in the site by uh, placing in forward the Protection Act, which was in 1972. Right. So this was the first incident or the first thing that the people showcased. You can try this when uh, how, uh, the question can be. How does community and conservation go, hold, go hold in together or how can they go together? Um, or does people support the environment? Are, were there any instance, or can you cite up an instance where the community itself came up and uh, underwent the conservation thing, right? So such questions then come in board exam. You can write these points by giving an example. Five villages in the Alwar district of Rajasthan have declared 1,200 hectares of forest as the Bairo, uh, Dev Dhakav uh, Sonchuri, declaring their own set of rules and regulations which do, do not allow hunting and are protecting the wildlife arts against any outside encroachments. So what they mean by telling this is that there was 1,200 hectares of forest in Rajasthan or uh, in a district called Alwar. Okay, the people there, they gave up a name, it's not important. Uh, they, the people there declared their own rules and regulations in order to protect the forest so that no external can come and change the rules. No one can hunt down, no one can cut the trees there. It is in the hand of people, in the uh, hand of the local community people. Okay, so this was the second example that you can write. The third one is Tipkov Movement, the famous one in Himalayas, has not only successfully resisted deforestation in several areas, but also shown that the community afforestation with indigenous species can also enormously, uh, is all, can also be enormously successful. Tipkov Movement, you can uh, explain about it properly, yeah. 
farmers and citizens uh, citizens groups like beach bachao andalan and tehri and uh, navdhania have shown that advocate levels of diversified crop production without the use of synthetic chemicals are possible so see what happens is that when we put in this chemical kind of uh, fertilizers in the soil for the time being the production will be really high but later on by and by we put this every year the soil loses its natural fertility soil loses its ability to produce its natural fertility and this chemical which is in the soil will run off when rain come it will run off to the streams or like the river sort of thing wherein there might be aquatic animals they will breathe the uh, their breathing is undergone by water right you know if the respiration goes through the gills they don't they cannot take oxygen from the atmosphere this thing we learned in the previous chapters in science so farmers and citizens groups like beach bajawa andolan thare i want you guys to remember this name and where was it located this is important has shown that advocate levels of diversified crop production without the use of synthetic uh, chemicals if you guys remember there was this woman uh, like this production sort of thing in science we learned it long ago where in first year we uh, put up some some sort of crop where the fertilizer is taken a lot and the next season we put in the crop where the fertilizer is been produced like the nitrogen can be produced back to the soil such crops are grown alternatively right so this was the uh, four points let's look on to the next ones uh india joint forest management program these are the main topics okay like the community and conservation from this and the uh, three mark thing like the protected reserved and unclassed forest definition of that example of that those can come from this chapter indian uh, for joint forest management which is jfm program furnishes a good example for involving local communities in the management and restoration uh, restoration of degraded forests what happens if we put in local people in this kind of programs they know what is more important or what is more good to their environment they know the soil better than the people from outside right so if you put in some local people for the program it's more beneficial to the program the uh, the program will go uh, to its success yeah so this is a program which is uh, full form is important india joint forest management the program has been formal existence uh, since 1988 when the state of odisha passed the first resolution for J- uh, the jfm okay jfm depends on the formation of local institutions that undertake protection activities mostly on degradation forest land managed by forest department in return the members of these communities are entitled to indirectly benefits like non timber forest produce and share in the timber harvest so what happens is this in such a case there should be some kind of return to the thing uh, the people are em- employed to right or for empl- for getting into the such movements people should be benefited in some way in in that way in return the members of these communities are entitled to intermediate benefits like non timber forest produces and share in the tam- timber harvest for successful har- uh, production okay so basically they are also give, uh, given some sort of um, benefit from this so the people are more towards such programs so we are done with the chapter this is the last part as i told these boxes are not much important but let's read it sacred groves a wealth of diverse and rare species nature worship is an old age tribal belief based on the premise uh, premise that all creations of nature have to be protected such beliefs have preserved uh, several virgin forests in pristine form called sacred groves the forests of god and goddess these patches of forest or parts of large forests have been left untouched by the local people and interference with them is banned certain societies revive a particular tree which they have preserved from the time immemorial in memorial the muntas and the santal uh, of chota nagpur region worship moha uh, that's a, it's a scientific name and kadamba these are not important trees and the tribals of odisha and bihar worship the tamarind and mango trees during weddings to many of us people and banyan trees are considered sacred indian society comprises several cultures each with its own set of traditional methods of conserving nature and its creation sacred qualities are often ascribed uh, to springs mountain peaks plants and animals which are closely protected you will find the troops of mekyekus and langurs around many temples they are fed daily and treated as a part of temple devotees in and out uh, bisnoi village in rajasthan herds of black black buck uh, nilgai and peacocks can be seen as integral part of the community in nobri hamsa so to me this is an important so it's basically telling us that in a society or indian tradition indian religions custom 
showcases wherein um, they are having some sort of sacred belief towards the trees right they worship them um, they protect them protect some animals because they considered as uh, considered in form of god right such things exist and because of that itself there is still some uh, forest left untouched which is a good thing so yeah that's it yeah so this chapter has a told the main part of this chapter is what biodiversity if you want uh, like the definition we know it differences but some sort of um, similarity or inter- uh, interdependence exists among them conservation right then the project tiger this places name then we have the forest classification then the community and uh, like the four four projects or five project basically questions can come directly from this page alone for three mark okay the agenda of set what is a uh, gfm fine and how can the local people be um, benefit benefited from it three quest three uh, questions three mark cool and then this is what what was important okay so that was the chapter so if you like my uh, lectures so hit the subscribe button and like button and share it with your friends and the notes will be in the description so that you guys can have a proper learning of the chapter done so see you guys in my next lecture thank you bye bye see you in my next video